Do you want to manage your Postgres SQL schema in a trackable, consistent and reproducible way? Are you tired of using bloated ORMs, learning new syntax that eventually translate to SQL but are always worse than writing pure SQL? In this video, I will outline some of the most important principles to follow when writing database migrations. I will demonstrate them using one of my favorite database migration tools, which is Graphile Migrate, made by the creator of PostGraphile which is a tool that automatically generates a GraphQL backend based on a Postgres SQL database. However, these principles and ideas would apply to any other tool for database migrations, as long as that tool uses SQL to define the migrations. Because, spoiler, I believe the best way to write schema migrations is in the native language of your database, which is SQL. Before I go into a practical example, here are just a few reasons why I love Graphile Migrate. Like I mentioned, the migrations are written in pure SQL as opposed to some arbitrary syntax. It means we are not tied to a particular tech stack and the migrations themselves are not coupled to the backend or anything like that. Second, it runs the migrations extremely fast and the development workflow is seamless using the watch mode and gives you immediate feedback. And third, it makes you think differently about the migrations using concepts such as idempotency potency and allowing only roll forward migrations, so no rollbacks, this leads to a cleaner, consistently reproducible schema. And I will talk more about these concepts later in the video. First, let's set everything up and see how amazing the workflow of migrating databases with Graphile Migrate is. Before that, I have something new in the background here. It's a YouTube counter. This is so awesome, thanks to all over 600 subscribers. And if you are not yet a subscriber, please do it. I really want to see that counter display 1000. Now let's get back to the demo. For this example, I will use Bon as I'm experimenting with it at the moment, but feel free to use Node.js as it's basically the same thing. This video comes at an opportune moment as Graphile Migrate version 2 is just around the corner. I will install Graphile Migrate, then run the command bon Graphile Migrate init, which will create a basic folder structure and a configuration file. Looking at the configuration options, obviously we need connection strings for a Postgres database. In my case, I have a setup using Kubernetes and creating a Postgres database is as easy as applying this manifest. In order to follow along, you can install a Postgres database in any way you want. You can install it locally, use Docker, whatever. Just make sure the database has three users that can log in. First, the Postgres user. This is only needed during development. In production, you don't need super user access. In addition to this, you want a couple of databases and users. First, the main database, the target of these migrations, and second, the so-called shadow database, which is used by Graphile Migrate for testing migration consistency and other tasks. Now I apply this manifest and once I have the database up and running, we can start filling in these configuration options. I'll grab the connection strings that were generated for me as Kubernetes secrets and just paste them here. For the purposes of this demo, this is good enough, but for production, it's recommended to use environment variables. Graphile Migrate has some other nice features, such as setting placeholders, which basically means you can specify some placeholder in your SQL migrations and it will fill them in from environment variables. This is useful in case you have some dynamic values you want to use in your migrations, for example. And then you have some hooks. Basically, you can trigger custom commands after a database reset or after running all migrations or after the current migration. Again, depending on how you chose to install Postgres, this part will be different. Once I can access the database, I can run bon gm migrate to run the migration. Basically, I created this alias for Graphile Migrate as GM. Check out the GitHub repo in the description. Of course, we don't have a migration yet, so it says everything is up to date. Better yet, let me run the migration in watch mode to show you how awesome this development workflow is. Running bon gm watch will start the continuously running command that will execute the migration automatically every time we change something in the SQL file. Let me just write a simple SQL statement to create a table. Hit save and then instantly you can see it already ran the migration, it says finished and there's no error. Just so we can see the results of the migrations in a UI, I'm going to connect pgadmin to this database. Yeah, let's check out the table, columns. Yes, everything seems to be here just as I defined it in the migration script. Now let me add another table. Hit save and uh oh, it complains that the first table already exists. So you have to remember that in development mode, you will run the same migration over and over while you keep iterating on it. This gives you the confidence that the migration script in its final form is correct. 
And here we get into the first principle that I think you should follow when writing database migration, and that is making the statement idempotent. So an operation is considered idempotent when you can run it multiple times and achieve exactly the same results every time. PostgreSQL syntax offers us solutions to write SQL in this manner. For example, before we create a table, we can drop it if it already exists. This makes the operation idempotent and we can run it as much as we want and the results will always be the same. Kind of like pure functions in functional programming. I have a video about that and you can watch it right after this one. The other thing I mentioned about PostgreSQL is that it only allows rolling forward migrations. So the workflow is something like this. You write the migrations in development mode, you get immediate feedback, you keep iterating on that migration. As soon as you feel it's done, you can commit the migration, which is sort of like a git commit, it gives it a cryptographic hash, basically ensure it will not be altered. If it is altered, then the migration won't run and you will get some error messages. In Graphile Migrate, we never want to rewrite history. So now you ask me, what if we make a mistake? Other migration tools support rollbacks, or even worse, make you write a rollback for each migration script. To better explain this, let me introduce a couple of concepts. There are two types of SQL queries. One called DDL, which stands for Data Definition Language. These are the queries that define, create, and modify database objects such as table, views, indexes, and so on. And the second type is called DML, which is Data Manipulation Language which allow you to manipulate data in a database such as inserting, updating and deleting records. Now let's imagine a scenario where your migration involves splitting a table into two separate tables. And this table is not empty, it already has data in it. So imagine the rollback script to put everything back as it was. It's insane, right? So why write the rollback script when you 99.9% .9 of the time don't need it. It's a complete waste of time. Instead, you should just do extensive testing so that migrations are correct to begin with. More on this later. So let's say you've changed your mind about the schema and you want the single table back again. Then just write the migration on top of the current state to get everything back as it was. So now you have a consistent reproducible chain of events which each and every time leads to the same final state. So no rolling back, just rolling forward. Look, doing database migrations with this approach requires solid SQL knowledge. However, even if you plan on using other seemingly simpler ORMs, sooner or later you will find yourself in a situation where you have an advanced use case for which the ORM doesn't have a solution. Or even worse, you have a use case for which the ORM is suboptimal and don't even know it. And at this point, inevitably, you will revert back to writing SQL. So just write SQL in the first place. If your migrations are written in SQL, then you can just reuse the, the migration scripts even if you switch the migration tools. You own your code, it's not written in some proprietary syntax. The SQL language itself is so mature and stable that you don't realistically have to worry about backwards compatibility or other nonsense. Okay, this was an extremely basic scenario. In order to illustrate the next point, we need something a bit more complex. If you don't want to see me type some copilot assisted SQL, you can use the chapters to skip this and jump to the next section. However, if you decide to stick around, you will see how GitHub Copilot helps in some ways, but in others, maybe not so much. Let's imagine a scheduling system for doctors. First, I want a table with basic information about practitioners. Oh, the trailing comma. Then we want each practitioner to be able to define their availability for each day of the week. So they can pick a start time, an end time, or mark it as all day. Let's also add a few constraints. For example, to make sure if we set the all day to true, then start and end times are null and the other way around. Okay, I also need a property for the slot size. I can set the default value of 60 minutes. I think it's a good idea to use Postgres comments to document some of these fields. Notice as I keep saving this file, I keep getting feedback. It either runs successfully or it immediately throws an error. This immediate feedback and quick iteration is the best part of this workflow. And knowing that my script can be executed repeatedly without side effects gives me a lot of confidence. In this case, I must be careful with the order of the deletes as I can delete some table that other tables depend on. Practitioner availability is dependent on the practitioner table. So let me just reorder the operations by moving all the drop statements at the top. 
I could use the cascade option to automatically drop all the dependents, but I consider that a risky practice as it may have unintended consequences, so I prefer explicit drop state. Next, I'm creating a table to contain each day of the week. And I can even seed this data here in this migration by adding a row for each day of the week. So if you notice, these are the situations where GitHub Copilot shines. This boring, repetitive stuff, it just saves me a lot of writing. Definitely not perfect, but for me it's worth it just for stuff like this. Let me just check pgadmin to see. Yeah, indeed everything is there. It inserted all the values. Next, I'm going to create a cross table between the practitioner availability and days of the week. And this gives the practitioner the flexibility to define different schedules for different days of the week. I want to create a table for calendar slots. And the idea is to have a function that will generate slots based on the schedule availability defined by practitioner. So for that, I need a test practitioner. And now let's try to create the function. Let's see what GitHub Copilot comes up with. It's probably going to be garbage. Oops, a syntax error, my bad. Um, I'm confusing TypeScript syntax with SQL here. Okay, let's rewrite this and maybe GitHub Copilot will figure it out as we go. First, I need a start and an end date, a slot size, and the planning horizon. Start day will be the current date. The planning horizon I can obtain using the practitioner ID that was passed into this function. The end date will be the start date plus the planning horizon. See, now the copilot gets it. So far, so good. I'm going to loop through all the dates between the start date and the end date. Again, here, copilot wants to write too much code at once. First, I want to identify which day of the week the current iteration date is. Is it a Monday, a Friday, a Sunday? For that, Postgres has a nice way of doing this. With the extract function, I want the day of week field from the date. Postgres features some amazing operation with dates, intervals, and time zones. It's so awesome to work with. So now that I know which day of the week it is, I just have to get the availability for that specific day. Let's check if there's an availability defined for the day of the week, and if it is, generate the slots. So from the start to the end of the schedule, I generate slots of the defined length. Yeah, now everything seems correct. So I picked a simple schedule so we can calculate more easily. A Monday to Friday 9 to 5 schedule should give us exactly 41 hour slots. And yeah, this seems to work as expected. Another point I want to make is that you can and definitely should do unit testing for database migrations. Let's test the function we created previously. Now let's make sure this logic will work as expected in the future as well. So let's write an automated test for that. With Bon, this is very easy as it has an integrated test runner. With Node.js, you might need a bit more setup. But the idea for the test is I connect to the database, create some test data, run this function, make some assertions, and then clean up the data after each test. If we run the test, it unsurprisingly passes. So to recap, write your migrations in SQL, write all the queries in an idempotent way so that they are repeatable, don't write rollback scripts, write tests for the database. Now, if you want to understand why I like Postgres SQL so much and why I choose it over MongoDB even for non-relational data, check out this video right here. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.